The team from Kirkstone joined me on this episode to talk about their real estate play in the blockchain game, how they're making fractionalized ownership of property easier to make it more accessible for people to enter into the real estate game, as well as their solution to fight against, not fight against, but to compete against Airbnb and platforms like that, making it a lot cheaper for the owners of the property to rent out their properties and people to actually rent the properties as well, taking away all these uh, international fees and all sorts of things to make it that much more efficient. They also have a solution around the deposit that you may put down for a rental property. And instead of just having that, just uh, doing nothing in a bank account and you don't see a return on that, some of these deposits are substantial amounts of money they can put that that deposit to work so that you can earn some interest of that and then have that returned back to you uh, with interest so that you're not missing out because of inflation and other factors that may happen in the economy. That uh, two or 3,000 that you put down as a deposit or a bond early on may be worth a lot less by the time you get it back. And having that work for you rather than sitting there idle is really, really beneficial. So let's get into this. Will Cameron, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Pete. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And I'd I'd love to learn a little bit more about this one. So Stephen from Vi Finance actually put me on to you guys and said um, he absolutely loves what you guys are doing. So let's start off first with your background and uh, how you got into the crypto space. Yeah, so um, me and Will have a similar background in terms of kind of our university background. Um, So I, I did... Uh, chemical engineering university and since then i've done a number of jobs that have been kind of more software based which allowed me to kind of hone my skills a little bit more and you know develop develop uh kind of develop this project a bit further um i kind of first got into the crypto space probably a bit late compared to some of the other early birds that we've been talking to people have been very uh, people were early uh, i was always very interested in it but it's just trying to find the time to really delve deep into it so i kind of first started at the start of like 2021 um and then you know kept getting the research and obviously kind of loved cardano uh, so my my background's chemical engineering and um i got into the space because of cameron actually he he sort of dragged me over <laughs> um, wanting to invest in um like the crypto space and then we just came up with the idea at the end of last year and we've developed it from there all right so what exactly is kirkstone and what is this problem that you guys are trying to solve with it so kirkstone initially started as a kind of model that me and will developed as as he said at the kind of the, the beginning of or the end of last year and to kind of reduce rent while maintaining a, a healthy profit um, and that's where that's where the kind of the, pop, the platform begun. Um, it's developed significantly from there um, because again that was kind of the, the base idea, and then we've kind of expanded the models, seen what else we can build in, and then seen try to address other problem areas. So um, right now we have five different kind of components, which I think in this slideshow we'll kind of show to the Kirkson ecosystem. And basically, the whole these different components are absolutely crucial in the like total model of how the Kirk utility is built. So it should allow us to maintain decent profits across the whole of the kind of ecosystem without really uh, kind of taking advantage of renters or uh, charging exorbitant fees for certain services. Okay, I'm pretty interested. Like, um, I, I don't know what the real estate market is like over there in the U- UK where you guys are based, but um, here the uh, rent prices are skyrocketing astronomically, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are being priced out of the market here. Like, uh, here locally in Surfers Paradise, um, I, th- I think my rent went up by 200 Australian dollars per week. Wow. And a lot of people were pushed out of the market completely, and they have to move, you know, further out uh, to the suburbs, uh, further away. And, you know, they work here, so it makes it really hard. So 
This sounds really interesting. Click through. So they're kind of basic problems that well, I'll kind of discuss to begin with, and then we'll kind of expand on it as we go through the presentation. Yeah. Um, the increase in highest prices versus the increase of annual income. If you plot that on a graph, those two are just separating exponentially. They're getting wider and wider apart, and that's just at some point this the whole uh, situation becomes completely untenable. Um, a difficulty in re recouping deposits. That's that's kind of two pronged. Uh, there's difficulty in recouping deposits when when you you know become a long term renter, and also with today's inflation, uh, I don't know what it is in Australia, but I think in the UK we're definitely above. I think we're just above double figures now. Um, so you're getting a significantly back, less back of your deposit. So we're kind of trying to build a system where you'd be able to invest it slash stake that deposit to kind of maintain the value. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, the kind of financial barrier to real estate investment. Now, this is one that people always talk about, like the fractionalization of real estate, but it's kind of a lot more difficult to do these kind of things in America, whereas it's, it's a very possible to do it in the UK. So we can do these kind of fractionalized investment in real estate, which should allow people that aren't particularly capital, capitally heavy uh, to invest in real estate without having, you know, so invest in such a significant and, a relatively, okay, relatively stable asset class without having a significant amount of capital. And then the last, and you know, definitely not last by any means, uh, it's kind of really important to the whole team is the increasing homeless cri homelessness crisis across pretty much the entire world, uh, especially as you said, with you know, rents increasing, people getting forced out. So you're getting forced out to the suburbs and then obviously there's there's a point below, past that where you can't afford rent. You can't afford where you're going to live or anything like that. So we kind of set out to prove that we could do all the claims that we're going to do whilst also uh, donating significantly to the homeless community. Sounds really good, but how on earth are you guys going to do this uh, <laughs> as a platform and solve all these issues? Well, we'll go through it. <laughs> But I'll start at the top. Um, so the NFT marketplace, where we just kind of, just kind of briefly touched upon, um, is a platform where we'll sell a variety of different NFTs, and um, and this platform will be regulated by the FCA in the UK, and we're kind of in the process of getting all that sorted. And on our, it's it's further back on our roadmap for that reason, because there's a lot of legal checks that with kind of our partners we're trying to do, and kind of make sure we have all that kind of ducks in order. Um, so that's kind of that's how we're addressing the problem of you know the capital investment into real estate. So we're reducing that number significantly. Um, the Kirkson Launchpad. That's um, where we're trying to basically promote real five projects on the Cardano ecosystem. Um, uh, currently, I think that all blockchains should be trying to promote the kind of link between uh, the you know the blockchain and the cryptocurrency world and the real world. Because that's where you'll be able to onboard the most members, and you know it's kind of crucial for any long-term success. Uh, our rental model we've already kind of touched upon, but um, I'm sure we'll touch upon it more. But essentially, it's we'll be able to charge significantly cheaper rent regionally by essentially lev leveraging our token. Erdos um, is kind of our Airbnb Vibo competitor, and just by leveraging the kind of the mathematical model that the KRM is built on um, whilst also adding in the fact that you, we can create very cost efficient smart contracts the cost of the running the system dramatically reduces compared to the standard Airbnb, Airbnb system for example which I think if you add guest and host prices right now together something in the region of 20% which is an absolutely very high number and then the Ashby Launchpad, which is something that Kirkson will develop and then pass over to Ashby because Ashby will be run as a completely separate entity to Kirkstone. And that's kind of our charity that we're setting up. And this will launch uh, projects that have a real charitable angle to them, real charitable side to them. So they don't have to be necessarily purely charity based. It's just they have to have a pure uh, kind of charitable angle, basically. Okay, so there's, there's quite a bit there to, to take in, I think. <laughs> it looks like there's going to be more. 
yeah, I was just trying to say that was a lot to absorb, and now you're showing me this with um, uh, the utility of the Kirk token. All right, let's go through this. <laughs> okay, so in the Kerem, which is the Kirk's mental model, you should when the um, the full uh, system is built out. We're currently just getting to our kind of where, where would you say we are, Will? Nearer, nearer an MVP stage right now. Nearer. We still got a couple more developments to do inside of the the landlord side of things, but it's get it's going well. Um, the uh, so you'll be able to hopefully de- um, invest your deposit. Now there's a couple of ways we're looking to do this. Um, we're trying to build out a system where you can kind of partner with one of the other projects. Probably not going to name anyone just because we haven't fully confirmed anything. Um, where we can be able to essentially kind of stake. Uh, Jed or stake your stable coin to allow a uh, kind of return over a yearly period. And obviously that kind of hedges your bets against inflation for that kind of reason. Um, obviously you can use Kirk for rental payments and utility payments as much as we can, as much as we can build in. Um, and also you'll be able to use a stable. So if you're not willing to use Kirk uh, for your rental payments, which is completely understandable, um, you'll be able to use any stable coin that we partner with uh, kind of long term. So initially we, we've partnered with Cotty so far. So um, for the kind of MB, MVP system build out, the system will have a JED based uh, option to it. Really interesting. So just before you go on there, I, I just want to talk a little bit more about um, that uh, bond mechanism. And um, I, I don't know how it works um, elsewhere in the world. Uh, but here, yeah, oh, the deposit, I should say, you call it deposit. Here in Australia, um, we call it bonds, and that actually goes to a third-party um, uh, organization. So yeah. we pay it to that third party, and no one has control of those funds, and they do what they want with it. They can invest that and uh, make uh, money off the, the millions yeah. that they're holding in that uh, fund, and they release it legally through the real estate agent once they go through the processes, once you moved on. Um, you have to fight for it still. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a chain, paint uh, chipped on the wall there, so you know, they take a little bit out. So, does it work uh, pretty much a similar way over there in the UK? So, in and the UK, the we have the and as, as for the deposit investment scheme, it's a little bit further back on our roadmap. I think the roadmap's going to be coming up, so I'll be able to yeah. give you an exact time of when or what uh, quarter. Yeah. Um, but we're just kind of confirming whether we can actually. Um, it looks like we'll be able to opt out of the deposit protection scheme, which is the UK's, essentially the UK's version of what you were saying there. Um, and then yeah, obviously okay. we have to kind of create our own kind of uh, documentation to say what we can and can't do. And that has to be agreed in terms of a standard rental agreement. So that's that's kind of where we're at with that. Uh, okay, um, continue. Where was that? Okay, yeah, Erdos. Um, Erdos um, is our, our catalyst proposal, so... Yeah, everyone go and check it out. Um, uh, we'll be able to uh, kind of provide a much cheaper system that, uh, current, than the currently built ones, um, including you know, your Airbnbs and your Vibo. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the crux of it. That's what the whole system, our whole platform is designed for. It's, first of all, can we be cheaper in the marketplace with still being sustainable? Um, and obviously the next one is can we you know, add improvements that may, they might not have and can we ensure a decent starting base? And we've kind of done all that. We've got great links in the kind of top of Scotland area, which should allow us to kind of really push through the kind of the test period of Erdos because that's crucial. And our onboarding users is crucial. And onboarding our hosts is very crucial. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of our Erdos system. There's a lot more information of how we – plan to do this in the callous proposal so if you want any more information on that uh, please go have a read with it it's much more. okay so eros essentially the blockchain version of airbnb you're going to try and tackle the giant uh that's that's uh that's that's no small task it's uh you know they they dominate the space they've probably got shaken up after uh, the whole covid thing and uh, you know people um, having some issues around the, around that, uh, renting out the properties and people moving elsewhere. But um, that's a mammoth task to, to market, to onboard hosts, to get people to use the platform um, as well for their bookings. So um, it's d- 
do you have any sort of plan to market that in the future to get hosts on board and to so the plan is platform? and it's, as i kind of said we've there's two huge hotspots in scotland for where we're going to start the kind of the rollout of the system and it's all timelined in the proposal but the um the, yeah. the hotspots are basically edinburgh and the highlands um now we as a company with all, everyone we've got in it have great links to people who use the system in the highlands and the organization and the kind of uh community uh organizations around there so we've taken a lot of the kind of market research and things from those from those people and tried to essentially build out a system that addresses these problems so that the kind of the normal the normal people on the ground will be able to use and be able to uh you know be able to want to have that kind of system and the thing that comes back in all these systems is basically why why are these companies taking so much money off me that's kind of one thing that comes back on all your kind of reviews as you're going yeah. through them it's like why am i getting charged for this why am i getting charged for that why am i getting charged for this why is this 14 percent um so yeah that's kind of the first angle we look to tackle for the mvp system and basically the system with the erdos system we want it to grow as cardano grows um so we want it to get it off the ground initially as fast as possible obviously and want it to grow as uh as fast as possible in terms of our own ecosystem but we're kind of trying to grow it as well as Cardano grows as well so that's kind of where we're at with that okay gotcha gotcha yes it's um going to be a, a mammoth task for that one but uh, a very very cool one indeed yeah um so the property equity nfts as kind of we've touched upon a, co- a couple of times already um the kind of the interface between these will kind of look like a similar dex uh so you would be able to trade uh shares in properties um and that the really cool thing about this i i think i mean other people have lots of cool things they think about different things like that obviously the barrier to investments lower which is very cool uh, i would have loved to during my uni days to be able to invest fractionally invest in you know a property to kind of give myself a kind of starting on the like a very small start on the ladder even uh and obviously these come with a rental return income as well so all these properties are, are rented out and they have a rental return income so it's not just an investment in terms of oh this is kind of a you know store of value it's a it's a something that's actively giving you a reward as well which is really interesting um i'm, I'm just uh, so i'm assuming the the property equities would be properties that um uh, kirkstone purchased themselves and then um have nfts for okay um so if that's the case then you probably be renting and uh, um, renting out the properties for a profit um there's there's a lot of property owners here in australia that um use a, a mechanism yep. called negative gearing here and it allows you to, uh, I, I don't know what it's like in the UK, but it allows you to rent out a property and make a loss on it. So it offsets your income, uh, income tax. So you have a loss there and you can claim that all back. Um, uh, do a lot of property owners do that in the UK and other parts of the world? I, I don't know what the rule so is. So in the kind of markets we were looking to tackle initially is the kind of student, more to the student market in terms of the property and the ROI in yeah. terms of return for these uh, student properties is by far the highest in the UK. And that's where you want to target there because we know it can be cheaper because they already have inflated prices anyway. And then bringing in this model, also it fits the demographics perfectly. Um, So younger people more likely to, you know, and kind of embrace the blockchain. It also allows us to kind of onboard people onto Cardano. As I said with me, you know, I'm only on to kind of the cryptocurrency space within, you know, probably like two, two years. Um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot. It's not actually that hot. And everyone's so friendly when you come on and come to these spaces and things. So it's about getting people in and getting people onto Cardano because, you know, that's you know, that's one of the big things for our project as well. That's absolutely brilliant that you thought about that demographic and the, the target that you're going to uh, try and target as well, the type of properties. So uh, that, that's that's. Um, so I'm going to skip past the mortgage NFTs for now because they're a bit further down the timeline. They're a bit past our kind of route for now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of legal work that goes into doing these, but these are kind of our, our kind of ultimate long-term aim is can we offer these kind of products that really significantly make an impact on if you would like to buy a house. And that's kind of the, you know, the top of the top of the tree. <laughs> um, the, the, 
Um, yep. The construction okay. of is actually very simple. Um, this is another thing that kind of really brought me onto the project. And as a, as Will was kind of describing, when when we first kind of came across it was, uh, I have a, a friend uh, who whose parents are quite avid uh, property investors. Investors. So this is when I was first coming coming down to coming onto this project, and the amount of capital that you have to outlay to invest in, for example, a construction project, even if it's fractionally, which which, which this was, um, is still twenty grand in that kind of region, um, and it it, yeah. it varies from yeah site to site and construction to construction but it's higher than it should be essentially for letting people who just want to invest a smaller amount in there so that's what we're trying to do is basically bring that barrier again that financial barrier down allowing people to invest in these things and get a return for when the uh, whenever the properties are sold and that's it's very simple that one actually in terms of it's a lot simpler uh, legally as well in terms of how we're going to be able to build that out this is our team right now and as i said i think i've said this before right now we we're kind of doing this all off our own backs all developments being done off our own backs um so to get this kind of many people interested in investing uh, investing interesting and in, uh, working with us is i think kind of a kind of a, a great result in terms of what the project looks like and what how many people it kind of you know in, entices to work with us um so yeah you know, 10, 10 of us working right now. Um, and how did the, this team form? It's, it's like I'm, I'm always wondering, like, how you managed to, uh, you know, get your story out, get the message out to various um, uh, people to call them in and bring them in to work on a project, especially in the, you know, the early startup phases when you don't have much uh, money, funds. I'm assuming no, no. you're not paying for everyone at the moment and um, they may have equity stake. So how do you how do you get people on board? On, Basically, on exactly what you said. So the equity stake is on is kind of one of the things, one of the ways we targeted some of the people. Um, we know a couple of these guys from my university days ourselves, and kind of hand picked them a little bit, <laughs> and we're like, okay, he was brilliant. Uh, let's see what he thinks. Um, and I think one of our kind of ways that we've approached kind of expanding our team is. Um, we're quite fortunate to know lots of really clever people. I think obviously you are as well with the amount of interviews and things to do. I think most people who've gone through kind of our kind of degrees and things actually know quite a lot of intelligent people. Um, I think trustworthy and honest people in terms of what we want for our cause and what we want to kind of offer was kind of one of the crucial deciders. So it's how do these people kind of profile in terms of that was one of our big ones. Um, so yeah, we, I think we kind of, kind of branched out as well. So we kind of approached one by one, um, and they kind of led us to the kind of next one and said, okay, well, and obviously there's kind of a vetting process whenever we do with someone and things like that. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now there's, um, also a lot of uh, development that you guys have to do with the, the platform and, uh, building out the smart contracts and all that. And uh, at the moment, I know there's a shortage of, uh, Haskell developers and Plus developers in general. Um, uh, is it, have, have you got that sorted? Do you, do you have a development partner? Or do you have uh, internal developers to actually build so uh, the smart So we can contracts? do some of that in-house, but as you kind of said, the partners are uh, what we're going for here. And we've had kind of in-depth discussions with one in particular, and we haven't signed on the dot lines yet, so I can't say here, but... Um, <laughs> well, that, Again, that one's, that one's, that yeah, one's come on, where's my exclusive? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, um, but yeah, <laughs> you can't tell me. We have kind of <laughs> analysed. Okay, where's our strengths? Where's our weaknesses? What where, where can we fill in? And you know, yeah. we could bring on more Haskell developers, and we probably will expand the team in that sense. But we're also definitely partner with a, a kind of Haskell consultancy as well to do kind of more of the smart contract side of things, so that you know. It's done by experts. Gotcha. So in terms of uh, funding as well, like you guys aren't going to be paying yourselves for the next, um, you know, two, three years. How are you going to fund yourselves? How are you going to kick this project off the ground? Like you got to pay people, you got to pay rent yourselves. What's the deal with the funding? Um, obviously market conditions dependent, to be honest. Um, trying to kind of set up a seed round uh, in this quarter, which is kind of looking more and more promising with every kind of 
conversation we have. So we'll we'll hopefully be able to set that up soon. Again with the private round as well. Um, the first property lease now, this is probably a little bit more outdated this robot now because of certain market conditions and how the project developed. That's probably going to be pushed back to the next quarter or might even be in the bridge of this quarter, but probably the, most likely the next. Um, and that's kind of how we're initially going to set the, set the funding now. We have released uh, the information on our Discord recently. So this is kind of more you know, exclusive. We haven't announced this on Twitter yet. Um, but we're kind of releasing these uh uh, founding NFTs and I think we're really excited about the amount of thought that's gone into the kind of utility behind them not only in terms of the the kind of owed Kirk amount but in terms of what other utilities across the entire platform and systems they'll be able to kind of claim um, yeah so these NFTs you'll be able to use them for staking rewards for Kirk um, you'll also be able to use them in our upcoming ispo that we're planning on doing in the next couple of months potentially um and that will give you like say the there'll be three tiers to these nfts say the the top tier you'll get a say a 50 percent reward bonus and the bottom tier you might get a 20 percent reward bonus we're still figuring out those sort of numbers but uh, that's how they'll work and then we'll also provide a lot more utility across the whole of the platforms. So that could be anything from, you know, trialing, uh, you know, your KRM DAP testnet to the Erdos trials that we'll be having in our student homes, um, all those sorts of things. So we're trying to provide as much utility as possible. So let's continue with the roadmap here. So we talked about um, the staking opportunities, NFT release and uh, the ISPO coming up. So what else have you got coming up for the rest of the year and uh, early next so year? So we want to be able to kind of develop some of the back the back end of the deposit scheme. Uh, probably not more of the legal side of it, more than the kind of actual technical side of it. Um, we want to kind of kick off um, a lot of the, you know, further down the line smart contract development uh, that wasn't fully related to the KRM so get that really really going uh, begin a kind of uh, public round I think the big one on the, the Q4 is the KRM DAP it's kind of a kind of our MVP system to kind of release to the public uh, which I think we're very excited about and uh, the first donation to Ashby will obviously be kind of a, co- a very cool moment as well um it will allow us to kind of, yeah, again, kind of live by our words, kind of prove what we're doing. Um, so yeah, um, going into kind of next year is when we, again, catalyst dependent a little bit, a little bit, but not, not all, all the way, but a, a bit, um, is the Erdos development and trial. Um, now the trial phase is kind of crucial for these kind of systems. Um, and they'll be run hopefully in, through KRM uh, properties and uh, incentivized hosts as well. Um, and as we were kind of discussing there, the NFT holders for well, part of these NFT holders will be able to uh, kind of get involved in this, which is again one of our kind of crucial values is kind of the community behind us. Um, the Ashby kind of full launch of the. It, and that's where we kind of push it aside. Okay, you're kind of your own thing now to, to a certain degree. We're still going to obviously develop the launchpad side of things as well, but so that people could uh, actively donate to if they want to. And then kind of longer term for that, we kind of hopefully see it bring in these DAO systems to kind of make a bit more, more of these decisions. But we have to kind of vet that a bit further and make sure we fully understand what we're talking about because obviously we want to, do the best for the actual charity and make sure that's in charity's best interest. We're going to have a, you know, check that a little bit more. Um, um, yeah. And that's kind of that for the Q1, um, the Erdos full rollout Q2, and that's where full UK rollout should be specified. Um, we want to roll out in the UK first. Again, make sure you hit all the regulations before you extend from country to country because a lot of what these competitors do is try and jump from country to country to country too fast and then they 
kind of lead themselves into a whole load of legal and regulatory headaches that because the system can't operate generally the same way in each country so you have to be really careful about how you deal with each country's separate regulations um not, not to mention also that you're dealing with a exactly. blockchain as well. So uh, you, you've got that whole rental real estate kind of thing, uh, regulations that you need to deal with yep. and the blockchain side of things. So you've got a, a double whammy there essentially to deal with yep. in terms of regulations. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. I love regulations. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a, a kind of mock-up of the UI that is coming out for the KRM. looks a bit more different to this now, actually. There's more. But... Um, yeah, it's kind of a very simple, basic, uh, be, be able to track your, how much deposit you've paid, um, whether you've paid in JED, allow you to invest your deposit, increase, maybe um, buy some equity in the in the place you're renting. Um, and one thing we haven't really touched on is the kind of landlord umbrella behind the KRM, which should allow um, any other landlord to use the systems for a fee, which should make it easier to again onboard people onto Cardano, but also um, generate another use case for Kirk in terms of a fee paying mechanism. Okay, so this is just the basic, again, the basic user interface mockup for Erdos. Um, so we'll have, not in the MVP, but the reward system. So you'll it'll be like uh, Deliveroo or like Uber, if you know they've got a loyalty scheme where when you you can build up your score basically so say you get all your deposit back because you haven't damaged your property that you've rented you'll get a better score uh, you'll get a rating from your the host you'll also get um say your payments are on schedule all that sort of thing you haven't cancelled all those sort of things will build up and then you'll uh, get higher rewards once you reach a new tier um all the other things are pretty standard, to be honest, across like Airbnb and Vervo um, on this page. Yep. Um, okay. So just that uh, reward mechanism for uh, being a good um, uh, renter or tenant yep. uh, is uh, is a key thing that, that that's uh, built into the platform. And the, the host will also have a reward system as well. You mentioned a little bit earlier your Callus proposal. This is specifically for the uh, Erdos side of the platform. Um, how much are you guys asking for in terms of funding? And uh, we've gone through the uh, rating process from the, um, the, the PAs, the uh, proposal advisors, and uh, the uh, veteran proposal advisors. What kind of rating did you guys um, get out so, of So, well? And if I get any of these numbers wrong, well, correct me. Um, but the, the funding we're looking for is 88,100. Uh, 88, um, and... Basically, the kind of promise that we made in the Catalyst proposal is any uh, <coughs> further development on the Erdos system is basically passed over to Kirkson. And Kirkson will, this is a kind of kickstart to get our MVP uh, Haskell side and some of the basics on the front end built. And then further development is to Kirkson when we'll fund everything. Um, the rating, I believe, yeah. 4.55. Um, which um, kind of placed us, I think about, well, I don't, I don't know the exact where it placed us, but I actually was quite happy with the ring in terms of the kind of scope of the project um, and where it put us. So that was good. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely love um, Project Catalyst and what it's providing for the community. <clears throat> so the the next things for the community, so the people, the everyone that's listening and watching this podcast episode at the moment, um, what should we expect next? It seems like the NFT series is going to be next and the ISPO next. Um, do you have any dates for this? When should we expect it? And also how can the community get involved? And um, so in terms further? of getting involved and follow the project further, um, all the links are on our Twitter in terms of to the website and everything. So that's quite a good little hub in terms of finding our telegram and discord and everything like that. Um, the NFT project and the ISPO dates haven't been, uh, the formal dates haven't been released um, we're trying to build up kind of a, a build up to that so that we can release them in a kind of marketing way. Um, but yeah, we're looking, we're very excited about where the project's going right now. There's a, there's a real buzz around the team in terms of what we're doing next. And so, yeah, just, I'll say more thanks for, thanks for having us on. And Thank you gentlemen for joining me on the podcast. 
it's been an absolute pleasure learning a little bit more and uh, good luck with the uh, Project 9 thanks, funding thanks. Yeah, as well. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, the guys have a lot of work to do to get this one out and working in the ecosystem. So if you want to support them, check out their website, check out their Twitter feed and their Discord channel. And also, of course, their Catalyst proposal if you're interested in supporting this one here. It's quite an interesting one. Votes are still up and possible to go through. So please check that out. All the links are down below for you. Now, if you really enjoyed this podcast episode, please consider giving that a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the notification bell and hear more from me real soon. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast Gotta get it hype, crypto is what we like But this is not investment or financial advice Gotta do your research, cause it's risky, we know it is This show is educational and it's informative Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate